Hey everyone, welcome back to another round of Where Are They Now? We're going back to August 2018, looking at my monthly favorites from then and figuring out if they're still around, if not, why not, and what has replaced them. So I have printed out my extensive list from then, my description box. Thank goodness I uh, listed it all out. It must've been a really long video. If you wanna see that video, I will tag it up here and put it down in the description box. We'll see what's changed. I've tried to approximate my makeup from back then. I am not wearing the shirt that I was wearing. I have decluttered that, given it away. What was I thinking? What, what, what was I thinking? Okay, anyway, so same color scheme in general. Here we go. So beauty favorites were extensive, and the first one was, which one was it? Here it is. The Revolution with Emily Edit, the Needs Palette. I am so glad I do these videos for so many reasons, but one is because this got put away recently and I kind of forgot it was there and I'm glad to pull it back out. This is the smaller of the two palettes that Emily released back then and this one is called the Needs Palette because it has everything you need for basically a full face of makeup, barring foundation and concealer of course, but you have bronzer, you have blush, you have highlighter, you have a variety of shades for your eyes and I think it is wonderful and I can tell you that two years later, all of these shadows are still creamy and pigmented and buttery. So that is awesome. I haven't used it in a little bit, so I'm glad to pull it back out. And along with that was the Wands palette. Much larger, much more colorful. I love this mirror. I don't think anyone has done a mirror this nice in any other palette I've seen. Here it is, beautiful colors. Okay, I just don't want the mirror to blind you. It has such a wonderful array of colors from neutrals to more color options. I will say the palette I have been reaching for more for colors is the Festival palette, which I'm sure you're hearing me talking about at this point, but it's true. I've been, this is what I've been reaching for when I go for color. That being said, these are pretty intense colors, whereas the Emily Wants palette are much more wearable colors. So I think I'm gonna start reaching for that one again. Speaking of more colors, another favorite from 2018 was the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette, which has some colors mixed in with the neutrals. And like many other palettes, I put it away for something else. And really there isn't anything else in my collection that has this array of neutrals and purples and a pop of really warm right here. So I haven't found anything else like it in my collection that I like better. So I'm gonna pull it back out and start using it again as well. Another favorite from 2018 that is still a favorite as well is this little guy. This is the Hourglass Lip Stilo in the shade Creator. Mine is so well loved. It's just a little nub at this point. Look at that sad little nub. But it is the most beautiful, soft, neutral, rosy pink. I love it. I love that the sun is shining right through the back of my head. Do I look angelic? Maybe we'll like this effect. Anyway, I love this shade. I have never found a lipstick in this shade quite like it. And it's on my lips right now, and it's so creamy. I mean, it doesn't travel all over, but it's just so comfortable on the lips. I'm still not sure why I haven't bought more of these. I'm sort of trying to put a moratorium on buying lipstick. If you saw my lipstick drawer right now, you'd be horrified. This one is another one. I've never found anything like it. It's still a favorite. I feel like it may have even been discontinued for a little bit, but now I find it on the Butter London website and on the Amazon website. This is the Butter London Pat and Shine Nail Lacquer in the shade Deary Me. And it's this beautiful, soft, rosy, cream lacquer. And again, I have not found anything like it by any other brand. So if you know of something that's like this, please let me know. This is the kind of color you can wear year round. It is appropriate for every environment you can think of. And it's the shine on these are so, beautiful. This one, I forgot how much of a favorite this is and was until I opened it up and saw I have really hit pan. It's the Fenty Kilowatt Duo Highlighter. One side is lightning dust, one side is fire crystal, and you can see that one side is really diminished. What makes me laugh is I think how many YouTube uh, makeup artists have you seen where they're doing their makeup in this, in a, in this pack, like using this mirror as their as their mirror. I, I think it's pretty fun. Oh, getting some more weird light. Anyway, this is a fat, this is fabulous. You get a lot of highlighter for your money. And I like that one side of the compact has more glitter and shimmer in it. The other one is just more sheen. So you can kind of mix and match them to how you want it look. I swirled my brush around in both to put it on today. 
I first, I remember how, why I bought this. I saw Lisa Eldridge using this as eyeshadow in one of her makeup tutorials. So it's a very versatile little highlighter here. I do really like it. I do have a current new favorite, which is from Laura Mercier, and it is her face illuminator. Not as versatile, we only get the one shade, but um, as I am aging, I'm appreciating less glitter in my highlighter, and this is just a beautiful metallic sheen with no discernible glitter or particles in it. This is the shade Indiscretion. I also have one, I can't remember the name of it, but it's more of a pinkish champagne shade. There is a nice shade range in this, but you don't get two in one. So there's that. Now this made me laugh because I have not put this on in a really long time. This was a favorite in 2018. It is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I'm wearing it in the shade 1N1. Yes, Ivory Nude. I forgot how, this is heavy. This is seriously heavy foundation. And I don't reach for that kind of heavy, long wearing foundation, especially since my skin has really been evening out in skin tone. It's just not, I don't know. However, with all the mask wearing, it might, you know, the other name for this is stay in place makeup. This might be worth investigating. However, when I want that heavier, medium to full coverage look, the two foundations I reach for are the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. This is a beautiful foundation that I feel gives the same, if not more amount of coverage as Estee Lauder Double Wear, and it just doesn't feel as heavy on the skin, and there is a huge shade range in this. And then on the other side of the spectrum, as far as budget, the Believe Beauty Foundation, what's the full name of this? It's their Skin Finish Foundation, medium to full coverage. This is the shade Porcelain, I think is best suited for my skin right now. It's fabulous, it's $5, a dollar general. You can order it online, and I, it wears for a really long time as long as you powder it. So I think there are alternatives to the double wear. Used to be the gold standard for a long wear foundation. I think there's some other options now. Then moving on to fragrance, my favorite for July 2018 was from the Clinique Happy Line and it was the Cocoa and Cashmere. Use that up, still love it. Would definitely repurchase. I am working my way through two other scents that I'm really enjoying, Peony Picnic and Lily of the Beach. I probably like Lily of the Beach a little bit more, but I hate to keep beating this, like, I don't know what, what's the, I was gonna say like, beat a dead horse, that's not what it is. I just, let's say, I hate to keep bringing it up, but Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Tom Ford Lost Cherry, oh, Tom Ford Lost Cherry. If you like cocoa and cashmere and you like that warm, spicy, slightly sweet scent. This is in that same family. Not even close to the same price point, I apologize. And then this was in the description box, but I had cut it out of the video back then because it wasn't a favorite of mine. It's a favorite of my boys, all of my boys, Shane, Jake, and Michael all use it. And they just were like, please don't talk about what we like. But you know what? A lot of you have teenage boys. Not that this is specific to teenage boys, but if you have teenagers dealing with acne, this really has helped all of them. It's from Clean and Clear. It's their Morning Burst Facial Wash. I think CVS and Walmart both have a generic version of it. It's fabulous. It is a great face cleanser if you have normal, I'd say, to oily skin, from what I can tell. I personally have never used it on my face, but they loved it, and it was in the description box back in 2018, and it is still a favorite in July of 2020. Now, moving on to fashion favorites, Bobble Bar, the Bobble Bar Priscilla Hoops were a huge favorite. I still love them. I'm pretty sure they're not available anymore. And I've mentioned several times, I don't really talk about Bobble Bar unless they're having a sale because their prices are actually very similar to Kendra Scott's, but the quality is not. So for a little bit more, I'd rather recommend something that is better quality. So I like, these are very similar. These are the Veronica Hoops from Kendra Scott. I have them in silver, but they do come, and at least I know they come in gold as well. And they're very delicate like the Priscilla hoops, but these are these, just, I like these a little bit better. Next, a favorite from 2018, of course, remember this was coming after the Nordstrom sale, was the Zella cropped joggers. I still have several pairs of them and I do wear them, especially when I'm like just going for a walk. I wouldn't wear them for working out. I think I'd get way too hot in them, but I love them for just kind of running around errands and Again, I kind of forgot I had them. I was wearing them a lot at the beginning of quarantine and I'm pulling them back out again. I'll, you'll be seeing them. And then the Adidas Swift Run sneaker was a favorite in 2018 and I can tell you they're still a favorite now because I wore them this morning to work out in. 
I do have the Swift Run and I also have a couple pairs of, I think it's called the Cloud Form. I definitely prefer the Swift Run, which is unfortunate because the Cloud version is far less expensive, but I love them. And I think the Swift Runs are in the anniversary sale. So if you were interested in picking up a pair, now's the time to grab them a little for a little less money. So another favorite in 2018 was the Barefoot Dreams Pullover. It's like a lounge-like top. It's made out of the same material that their cardigans are made out of, but it's, it's a top. And I loved it so much, I went on to buy the matching pants. I will admit I am pre-filming this in anticipation of moving Shane back to Ole Miss. So I don't know where this is actually going. But as of filming this, I haven't received my haul yet that I placed, my, or I should say I haven't received my order, that I placed for the Nordstrom anniversary sale. But what I am buying, which is very similar to the Barefoot Dreams kind of lounge set that I loved in 2018, is a newer version. For 2020, it's their Namaste set, and it's not the same material. It's more, it looks like it's more like a modal jersey type material. It's much more lightweight, but it's Barefoot Dreams. You know it's gonna be amazing, and I cannot wait for it to come. And then the last favorite in fashion or clothing from 2018 was the Frame La High Skinny Jeans, and they're incredible. They're still incredible. Yes, they are high-end, more designer type jeans, and they're incredible, and they should be. They're expensive. There's always some version of them offered in the anniversary sale. So if there is, I will list it in the description box. But, you know, I find them at like Nordstrom Rack. I, I found them at Off Fifth, places like that on sale. I often see them on Amazon as well. They're amazing. If that is not in your budget, the Levi's 721 high rise jeans are very similar. They give a similar feel. And I just got a pair, two pairs of good American jeans that have that high waist. They are in the same general price point as the frame jeans, a little less expensive. And again, they also are in sales a lot. So it's something about the frame and the good American jeans, both that higher waist and there's something about the material that just sucks you in and makes your legs look incredible. So if it's in your budget, I don't think you'll be disappointed in either of those. And then for lifestyle favorites, I'm looking down here. So they're all book recommendations mostly. Um, the first was Strange Practice, and it is the Greta Van Helsing, I think that's her name, series, where the main character is a normal person, a human being, who is a physician to supernatural paranormal creatures in London. And since then, there's at least one more book that's come out. I really enjoy the series, and there's, I really haven't read anything else quite like it. Definitely still recommend it. Another totally fun, just silly, silly series. I think these are you know, one of those ones that it's like Kindle only recommended $4.99 kind of books. They're kind of like the Hallmark movie of mystery series, if you know what I mean. Anyway, it's the Misfortune mystery series where the main character is a former CIA assassin who's trying to retire and relocates to a small town in Louisiana. They're fun. They make me laugh. It's a great series if you're just looking to get away from reality for a little while. There you go. And then back in 2018, Crazy Rich Asians, the trilogy and the book, I mean, and the book, of course, and the movie were huge and still just fabulous. I know the author came out with a new book. I purchased it. It is sitting in my list of books to read and I just haven't gotten to it yet. But if you haven't read any of the Crazy Rich Asian trilogy, read the books. The movie's great. It really is but it goes the next level with the books and you just aren't going to get that richness of the characters and the culture and the history of what's of the setting unless you read the book. So if you haven't done it yet, give it a look. And this is making me laugh. Back in 2018, I had started on Facebook a group within the Miss Gold Girl Facebook page. It was the Bravo, it is the Bravo discussion group and it's still there. I don't have the same passion for the Real Housewives franchise. <sighs> That's a whole discussion in and of itself. We really, ladies who are with me over in that Bravo discussion group, I am so overdue for a Facebook Live just in that group. If you're in that group, say hey down in the comments and let me know when's a good day and time for me to schedule something like that. It's gonna have to be probably the end of August, maybe into September even, but we need to catch up, I think, and like dissect the whole franchise. If that's your thing, I'll put the link to the, to the Facebook group and you're welcome to join me down there. That's it for revisiting 2018. It seems like a lifetime ago. Sometimes I do these videos and it feels like it was just yesterday. 2018 seems a long time away. Or maybe it's just that 2020 is the year that will not end. It needs to end. 
Anyway, strangely enough, almost every single one of my favorites are still favorites. It was a good month. Hope it's been a good month for you so far. Hope it keeps going that way. And if it hasn't been, I hope things change soon. Thank you to all of you who've chosen to spend some time with me today. I do really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.